Okay, good morning to everyone. So, uh, this will be uh, mostly a sharing session. It's a sharing session about the latest state of the art in the field of text to image uh, generator model. So, although although the, the title feels feels like uh, it's uh, heavily related to research paper or, or in assisting or something that may assist but most of the content will will falls under you know awareness awareness or sharing session on what is going on uh, in the field of text to image gen generator but i tried my best to include some information that that may help us in further um, uh, that can can help us to 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 enhance to, or to expand the scope of our research in computer science and, or IT fields. Okay, so I'll start with the outline. So this will be the outline of this sharing session. So I'll start with the introduction and then followed by examples of some of the text to image generators. Uh, for in, in this session, I will share the three most commonly used one uh, or the, the models are free, are publicly free except one out of these three except sorry out of these three two of them are you know they are subscription based but one of them is totally free for public use as of now which is the stable diffusion so here I'm, i will be sharing or introducing to three models the daily mid journey and stable diffusion and then i will also discuss briefly about the potential uses of, of all these models computer science and IT research, and we'll look at briefly at the SWOT analysis and finally conclude the session. All right, a brief introduction to what text to image generators are. It is the basis or the fundamental models or the fundamental framework behind all these models are they are generative AI models. And uh, the, the core, the core models or core frameworks usually involve the transformers based language models which are heavily related, involved in natural language processing. And then the generative adversarial networks, uh, commonly used in uh, in the past, they, they use it for super resolution uh, related uh, activities. And then legend being diffusion. These are mo mostly, I think also closely related to super relation models to create images that are relevant to input data. So basically how it works is that we provide input in the form of text and the model will try its best based on what the data that it has been fed to train the model to generate an image that suits or meets uh, the user's input. So for example, the one that we are looking at here, we have three examples from different models, Mijani, Dell E, and stable division, but using the same user input. Hopefully you guys can see, but the gist is that we enter input and the model our provided information in the form of text. Okay. okay, and then I'll proceed by showing some of the examples. So basically the commonly used one in the past, they started by implementing this model for data augmentation purpose where the user uh, can feed you know user user feed their own image and this is the starting of uh, the image generator they feed image and then the model will try its best to generate variations variation for example uh, the one that we are looking at here it, it is based on one image of image of jacket and the model create variation of it Okay, or then okay, so I'll start with daily. So an example of daily. So sorry, this will I think this will be a very quick presentation because at the moment uh, we have we have some audit activity going on. So I took some ex some some time to to ex to get me excuse for more. Okay, so this is daily. All right, so and then later on we will see a, a direct comparison between the three models. In fact, we have more. I'll show more demonstration of several models and we see which of the model 
uh, according to our judgment, are the best in terms of quality preferences. But mostly it depends on the taste or the preferences of, of the user to, to decide which model are the best for them. Okay, the latest model, they, they name it as Delhi 2. For example, this is an image generated from a text, a koala riding a motorcycle. And then the model generate um, what it what it does is that uh, first of all it associate it takes the it put it separate or distribute uh, analyze the text uh, and then extract the tokens or the words and then assist, associate the words with the uh, the image for example koala and motorcycle and then from the the vast from the huge library that has been used to train this model it tries to to relate uh, the the riding the koala riding on the mot motorcycle and, and then uh, give us all these images. Uh, they are they are most of the time they are not really perfect, but as a user we can further fine tune the text. Uh, this one this text is very simple, but actually we can fine tune it in, in to include like the 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 type of camera used to capture the image. We can we can also uh, I think we can, uh, we can also input the quality of the image that we wish to generate, the aspect, aspect ratio, the lighting, the mood, how blur it is we want, uh, the, the, the bokeh, and all those photographic terms, we can include them to, to finally get the images, the type of images that we, we are looking for. And then next, uh, these are let me see if I can zoom in. Can I zoom in? Okay. So this is an example of Pigeony. In my opinion, this is in my opinion, based on the experience that I have used uh, from all these models, my opinion is that in terms of artistic quality, uh, Pigeony is the best. Pigeony is to give the, the most visually appealing output. But this comes with all these images are generated from a very specific, a very detailed, a very fine-tuned text in order to get where we have the one that we are looking here, looking at here. Okay, and then uh, this is an example where the text input is Japanese woodblock style with cherry blossom in a city. So this is the one that is being generated by the model looks very appealing it can be and then it, it's up to the user where they want to use this image for and finally i think the, the third example for the sharing session is called the stable diffusion and this is free free means that there's no limitation in terms of how many times we we want to use the model uh, to generate the image it can uh, it's free actually it's an open source later on i will also share where we can uh, we can download or i mean we can we can download and uh, download the model and then fine tune it for our maybe research purpose or for our personal use but uh for for, for the context uh, for the expert this sharing session uh, we will look at from the context of research this is an example of stable diffusion output okay where the input of uh, stable diffusion it separates two type of prop or input one is the positive and then the negative prop or instruction where the positive is the words or the text that we wish the model to generate and the negative prop is where we wish the we wish to exclude uh, the the meaning of the words from the image generated by the model. Okay, let's look at some potential usage of this model in in computer science and how it can help us in research. So these are some ideas. Uh, one of it, the first one, user interface design. You know, uh, this I say this is just uh, uh, this is my. Uh, this is my opinion. I feel that you know, since our our background, we are we are very technical, so we have I think we have limit some some basic 
a very limited knowledge or in, in terms of artics, uh, artists, artistics. You know? So sometimes there are times that we we want, but it's difficult for us to maybe describe someone. Like, for example, we look for designer and we have to pay to ask them to, to ask for their service. And the output or the result of their service may or may not suit our needs. So it, it turns out that we we have to try and error, try and error, look for better words used and so on and so on. So one of the uses of this, especially the, the free model, it can help us visualize what we are thinking in terms of maybe how, how the framework. Now, I also wish to share, I also want to share that this model is not limited to generating image only. It can also generate like a poster design, flowchart, a map, map, mind map, brainstorm, and so on. The limitation is up to our creativity. So human creativity is actually the limitation. And also the model, and how the model, you know. But generally, it's our creativity that limits the, 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 out, the output creativity as well as variations. So synthetic data generation, I think this is the most commonly used or the most commonly the most common purpose where people researchers use this model so is to generate more data for example a cat we wish to generate variation of cats so we ask the model to generate maybe 100 100 images of Persian cat and then we as a human maybe we together with some expert maybe someone who are very knowledgeable about cat species to validate whether or not, whether or not the image can be labeled as a Persian cat, so we are uh, we label the data set as the ground truth, but the, this model help us generate more data, uh, and this data can be further used for other uh, machine learning purposes. Image editing, okay, the generate images can also be used, you know, like like this, this, this from this perspective of design, you know, design. A graphic design and so on for example um, we want to design a 3d model 3d model images to be used for other purposes such as uh, game development game character development game modeling development the world building for a for a games so we describe the world that we want for our games for our maybe novel book uh, some digital digital type of uh, uh, products where we simply describe the world that we wish to incorporate in our products and this model is very helpful in this term, in this perspective. Data augmentation, okay. All right, now we look at the short analysis. We go from praying until the thread. So the strengths of this model it can help researchers to communicate better in expressing their ideas. You know, they are saying that saying one image equals to 100 words. One image tells 100 words. And it also can help us in increasing data diversity. So it, suppose that we are very limited in terms of number of images that we can get. Okay, maybe we have several distinct classes but we wish to expand the number of images so this is one way instead of relying on the the basic data data augmentation workflow we can use uh, text to image generator to help us generate more data and save, save times and resources in terms of designing design graphic design and so on the weaknesses so the accuracy and quality issues for example, when we ask the model to illustrate or to design a person, okay. a person, the figures, the oh, output generated wow. by the model may not always be perfect. For example, number of fingers, there can be nine fingers, six fingers, seven fingers. Uh, this is some of the example. This figure. So basically, the human. The human illustrated by the models is not always perfect. There are some some form of this figure. 
somewhere. Maybe the eyes is there's something wrong with the eye, the hair. Uh, but we can always fine tune the image to until we get the the, the, the perfect I mean, not really perfect, the, the one that we are very satisfied with. Require expertise. Expertise in the form this one is in from the context of in the context of model implementation. So not everyone uh, can do this, especially if we are talking about uh, someone that from that are not that are not from a tech, doesn't have a very strong technical background. It will be very difficult for them to implement this uh, for their own use, for personal use, uh, uh, installing you know, installing on their PC to to further fine tune the performance of the model. But let's not talk about fine tune. So basically, install on their own laptop PC instead of using online. So these are some of the weaknesses as as of today. As of today. Now the opportunities, new research avenues. So it can help us um, open up more visual, non visual representation of our work. Sometimes we may not be aware because our creativity we. Creativity is sometimes triggered by something, uh, triggered, uh, what? triggered by observation. And sometimes we, we take some holiday, we go to new places, and we see new things. The things that all these new experience can help trigger our creativity to open new world into in our research, for example. Improved data analysis, so providing ways to visualize and represent our data. Our, and then final innovation. It can help us discover. There are many creative, I have seen so many creative usage or implementation of this model in the form of a design, 3D design, 3D design, where they create a very, not only design, but also brand. So, for example, uh, this guy want to, want to not de develop, to come up with a new water bottle, but at the same time looks very interesting and practical and has some unique features. So this guy used this model. So basically the, the what the guy did, he explained what he want in the form of text, generate image, generate image, and so on until he get what it, uh, uh, an image of a product that looks very feasible, practical, and suit the user's need and a very unique most important the product looks very unique so threads so most of the time it, it the threads are in the form of ethical concerns and potential use of technology such as creating fake images for for unethical purpose and then also, although not really related to us, but it may may limit one a person's creativity in terms of this one is more on the, the handcraft and hand drawn images. So we are uh, could be one day we only rely on this model instead of a uh, what uh, express our own uh, technical. Uh, skill in terms of drawing and road images. Okay, so we're already at the end of our sharing session. So, so what I can conclude is uh, this text to image generator has lots of potential and help us exploring more uh, new things, new variation. Uh, with hope that this can further propel or further expand the scope of our research in certain topics. Uh, actually, any topic, in fact. And all these four images that we are looking at here are all generated by the model. Uh, all the gener generated by model. I think my input is that I, I think I wrote cats riding, uh, cats or something, cats drawn <clears throat> in colorful crayon, except the last, the, the last image of the cat. Okay, so. So I'll start by, so I proceed by showing some example, open source. Okay, so let me stop sharing.
So this page called the Hugging Face website or page is one of the most commonly active, is one of the active community uh, in this type of machine learning world. I think, I don't think it, it only limited to text to image generator. If you look at this page on top, there's one tab called spaces. If we click on the spaces, we can see there's a lot of models shared by everyone, the, uh, all the community. All these are open source. All these are open source. Uh, so I think that there's a way on how we can download them and install it and fine tune for our own personal use. Uh, for But for this session, I would like to focus on two models. One is called the Let me sort based on most like. One is called the Stable Diffusion 2.1, and the other model is Clip Interrogator. So these two can be used uh, a complement to each other. Yeah, they are complement to each other. For example, let me uh, briefly explain what what is the purpose of Clip Clip Interrogator. So Clip Interrogator, what it does is that it will uh, it received an image from the user. For example, let me load this cat or this this image. Okay, and then let me select the model. If I click on submit, it will start performing some uh, the, the machine learning work. Okay, the, the the all the technical. The output will be in the form of text. So I have done this previously. Uh, let me show the result of this page. Okay. So I have done this previously and this is the, the output of this image. So the output of the image will be in the form of text. So a couple of people that are standing in the grass by Rudy is one door, some through the trees, farmers. So if you if you notice the the sentence doesn't, the text doesn't have to be a coherent uh, sentence. It can be a list of paper, it can be a list of uh, criteria or parameters of text or features, features that we wish uh, to be integrated in the images. So after, after this model generates this output, we can, for example, copy this, copy this text, and then we copy, okay, we copy all these texts and then we went to the, we go to the second model, which called the stable diffusion. Okay, so what we can do is that we paste the text here, the one that copied previously, and then I click on generate images. And then what it does, it will create artificial images that fits, that fit the text that I've entered just now. So all these are unique images. All these are unique images, okay, uh, generated based on the text that I've input. So these are some of the ways that we can we can make use of this technology. Uh, the best is you know, the best. I ha I myself have not attempt to download the model yet, but uh, I wish I, I will do it so in future just to play around uh, to fine tune the model to for. Of my own, um, for my own work. Okay, so this is how we can do. So it's quite fun. So you, we can in, in we can upload any images, and then get the text. Maybe one, one, the one purpose for for from this that I can see is that we, we see how the model, uh, we see how to construct the text. We look, we look at. How can we construct the text in order to use this model? Okay. If, we, if I click on generate again, it will generate again, but it will take some time for oh, error. <laughs> okay. I think that's all for my, oh, there's one more. I wish to share one more video. It's a video actually. Hopefully you guys can see this video. So this what this video is about is a, a quick comparison of 
image generator model, text to image generator model using the same prop, the same prop, the same text, but different model. And we see how each of the model interprets the text. Okay, so I'll start by playing the video. HAI image generator is the best. I tested 10. Don't have to. These are the results. Okay, the, the text here is a samurai in ancient Japan. So what we see here is uh, an image generated by Delhi model. This one is Mid Journey. Night Cafe. Stable Diffusion. Star AI, Star AI, I think. Put off. Arts Park, Rayon, DPI, Dream by Wombo. It's your favorite. Yeah, actually, there's more. I think recently Google also has um, has published their their own text to image generator. I forgot their name, but but it does the same thing. The only difference is that how the output looks like. Okay, I think that's all from me. Thank you very much, everyone. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ebin, for a very nice uh, talk and sharing session. So, we open the floor. Any question? Okay, yes. Um, thank you for your presentation. Can you say something about how the technology works? So does it search the web for base images which are then augmented or base images which are then compiled? Okay, so basically it involves at least two, at least three, at least three model. So one model is to perform the natural language processing. So these are transforms based language. So it starts by doing the basic uh, extracting the tokens extracting the words entered by the user inputs. Okay. And then from the words, from the words that has been compiled, it then compare with a data of images. All these images has some text label, label to the images. And the, the, the framework will try to associate the text with the images and also the meaning, the sentiment of the text itself, sentiment of the text in itself. And to, in terms of the, we don't know where the data came from, all these models, they are trained on different type of model, but a different type of data set. They don't have the same data set. So these data set are not really disclosed uh, by uh, all these, uh, all these uh, publishers, all these company. Uh, let me say community. So one of the out of these three, for example, Mid Journey, Daily, and Stable Diffusion. One of them, the the open source one is the Stable Diffusion. So to be honest, I have not really looked into the the detail of the model itself in terms of data. What what are the data? I mean, the, the content of the data set itself. But the the general idea is that it gen it extract the text. It decompile or decode, sorry, encode the text. And then from the text, it decode image. And then finally the image to, to create a high quality image, they perform some real uh, super real resolution model to get the best uh, idea, the best quality as possible. Now, what we are looking at here, most of the the image are not really that big. I think it's around 300 to 400 pixels. So not really suitable to be used for for a, a big printing. Like a, 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 but, but this is not really an issue. We can always use other models for sharpening model to, to further improve the quality of the images. Yes, Bob. So all these systems have got large databases of images. Yeah. And so yeah. they operate. Yeah. Text and image. 
Mm. Can I ask another question? If sure, sure. I post the same text in two different sessions to the same okay. system, do I get the same set of images? No. It will create different different image. Okay, so it'll be different images every time. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Brother. So, any any more question? So, yeah, yeah. Um, I was thinking when they try to match the text to the the, the images, basically they are not generating, but only matching to the nearest um, mm. description of the images. So they are looking at the ranking, um, like uh, using the TF-IDF only. Not, they are not actually generating, right? They, they actually generate all this. Uh, if we talk about the final output, uh, it's a unique image generated from the features. I mean, at the end, when we, we when we train a model at the end of the model, it will have some some weight or features, and this weight contain images for the for this particular data set. So, for example, we input a car, a word car. So we we'll, it will try to yeah as uh, as Prof Rainer said, it will try to measure which of the data set that are very closely related in terms of differences with the user input, and then try to go backward, go backward and basically regenerate uh, the features, the high level features according to the text. So, so this is what we get from, from the back, backward operation of this particular model. Oh, okay. So basically they will receive the images and then try to adjust the images or yeah. regenerate the images yeah. based on the description. Yeah, so that's why the the images every time we generate it will be different because uh, this this okay. the account there's some probability it involves some probability uh, parameters. Uh, that's why we get different. Although although the the intensity the intensity in terms of differences can be tuned. Uh, I have seen the parameters. I have seen some of the the details. Uh, a quick a quick look at the how the this framework works. We can actually adjust the they they call these terms as I think temperature. The higher the temperature, the more chaotic the result will be. Okay. Mm. Can I ask another question? Yes. Uh, just just something else in the. Um, I think it was called Scrutiny, the app you used to generate, to do the reverse, to generate text from images. But why did the text have the names of people in it? Oh, because some images, for example, Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa draw, uh, basically it, some, some images that has been trained the label is not really, it's not a very simple text. It's in the form of description, like a picture of Mona, Mona Lisa. Okay. So it's a, an image of, of somebody. Yes. yes. Mm. We can actually, for example, we can actually ask the model to recreate something that looks similar to Mona Lisa. Uh, and then to be more, so basically by including the, the name of the artist, the model we are actually for the fine tune the result. So in that so description, that will... there were four names. So that's four different artists. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's an amalgamation of the work of four different people. I understand. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Another. So okay. Any more question? One up one, no question. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just wonder, um, 
if you generate the images based on the set, based on the text, what are the possible uh, method you use to measure the accuracy? It's the same way how we measure the, uh, the, the basic will be similar to the, the guns, the guns model. We are actually measure the differences. Okay. Uh, uh, the so differences the, between? Between yeah, the, the differences between the images and also the generated images or yeah. so a lot okay. actually there's a lot of going on. The the text actually the, the text sentiment or the text meaning also is is being measured. So the is it's a it's a multi I don't can we say it's a multimodal? It's a it's an integration of so many models from so many topics into one purpose but the fundamental is that it involves natural language processing and image processing or computer vision pattern recognition as well all into one cup one bowl these are some of the example um, for from mid journey all these are text generated images you can you can actually find it although I've, if if you want to do some demo on how to perform, but I think I've used up all my all my credits for Mijani. Let's look at it. let's go for stable diffusion. We do some live demo. Stable diffusion diffusion. This one is an open source, which means we can mm -hmm. actually download it and run it on our own PC, provided that we have a very high specs of GPU. A cat, a smiling cat, a, a, a cartoon drawing. Smiling car. Smiling car. <laughs> this one, according to this estimation, it, it will take around one minute to generate images. So it will be, be very yes. helpful if we can. It will be very interesting if we can, we can have this. Uh, offline, this model offline for other purposes. I've, I've, I have I have seen one video with GPU NVIDIA, I think NVIDIA 330 series. Will not really be, will not be that fast. One image, it took this guy around 20 minutes to generate, simply generate one image. So that's why uh, it's not really common yet uh, in, in in the in the researchers because it it very high demand it very demanding in terms of high and the specification smiling car this one is very close to our description the first image smiling car okay. So every time you run, you will get different images. Yes. Okay. So uh, how do you uh, say one is better than the other? This one, at the end of the day, it the, it ups it it is up to you know uh, from the perspective okay. of user, it depends on our preferences. But so maybe you can so... maybe you can capture the preference uh, data and then. Let us, yeah. you, you could say this is the best one. Mm. So again, you can classify preferred images and non preferred images, but very difficult also because every time you run, you will get different uh, images. Yeah. Yeah. So far, what I've seen, the method to cap to do this is by by providing a a a a a an additional input from the user in terms of whether they like it or they don't like it. So yes, no, that's a binary input, one, zero. Okay, so any more questions? Okay, so if no more questions, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Arabi. So for very nice and 
uh, what we call new knowledge lah. Eh. So okay, so maybe in future we also can consider we gen uh, what we generate text from the photo lah from the figure. Okay, maybe in future. So, okay, thank you very much. So we end our second session.